On Thursday, Senator Rand Paul said that he was preparing to break his silence on the Republican presidential primaries, sounding like he was going to make an endorsement. And then the very next day, yesterday, he posted this. Good morning, everyone. As I told you yesterday, I'm ready to say something about the presidential race. I've had a long relationship with Donald Trump, and there's a lot to like there. I'm also a big fan of a lot of the fiscal conservatism of Ron DeSantis. I think Vivek Ramaswamy has been an important voice. Also have listened to and met with the independent Bobby Kennedy. I'm not yet ready to make a decision, but I am ready to make a decision on someone who I cannot support. So I'm announcing this morning that I'm Never Nikki. And if you go to nevernikki.net, you can let her know that you're not a supporter either. I don't think any informed or knowledgeable libertarian or conservative should support Nikki Haley. I've seen her attitude towards our our interventions overseas. I've seen her involvement in the military industrial complex, $8 million being paid to become part of the team. But I've also seen her indicate that she thinks you should be registered to use the internet, that people posting ideas anonymously. I think she fails to understand that our republic was founded upon people like Ben Franklin, Sam Adams, Madison, John Jay, and others who posted routinely for fear of the government. They posted routinely anonymously. And I think her failure to really understand that or to think that you should register through the government somehow for the internet is something that should disqualify her in the minds of all libertarian, libertarian leaning conservatives. So I'm announcing today I'm Never Nikki. You can go to nevernikki.net and sign up and show her that you're Never Nikki also. And like he said on the website, nevernikki.net, he lists a variety of reasons why no American should support this brunette Hillary Clinton. And with the Iowa caucus on Monday and the New Hampshire primary the following week, it's extremely important that we make sure that nobody votes for neocon Nikki and she comes in last place and then takes a hint and finally drops out of the race. And here's an interesting new campaign ad showing just a small sample of her hypocrisy. Governor DeSantis is hitting you for claiming the retirement age is, quote, way, way too low. I have never once said that. But what we do know is 65 is way too low, and we need to increase that. We need to do it according to life expectancy. I never once said Hillary Clinton was an inspiration. I often say that the reason I got into politics was because of Hillary Clinton. I never said government should go and require anyone's name. A huge issue that I'll deal with as soon as I get there is social media. They need to verify every single person on their outlet. And I want it by name. What I have always said is boys going to a boys' bathroom, girls going to a girls' bathroom. bathroom. But hold on one second. When I was governor, they wanted to bring in a a bathroom bill, a transgender bathroom bill. And I strong-armed and said, we are not going to have that in South Carolina. She said the law shouldn't get involved in that. And I just ask you, if you're somebody that's going to be the president of the United States and you can't stand up against child abuse, how are you going to be able to stand up for anything? That That is the truth. We have it it on video. When a 12-year-old child in this country assigned female at birth says, actually, I feel more comfortable living as a boy, what should the law allow the response to be? I think the law should stay out of it, and I think parents should handle it. So while Ron DeSantis is literally 50 points behind Donald Trump in all of the polls, you got to admit that was a very powerful campaign ad. And Joe Biden was surprisingly allowed out of the White House to hit the campaign trail where he visited a local coffee shop. And this happened. (laughs) So the audio was obviously terrible and hard to hear. He said, my name is Joe Biden. I work for the United States government in the Senate, but he hasn't been a senator for like 20 years. He became vice president back in 2008. And the girls laughed at him because that's what you do when old people say things that don't make any sense. And also when he was there, he spotted his favorite thing and did what he always does whenever he sees one. Do you have office in Secretary Austin? I do. I'm sorry. Was it allowed to do? I can't remember not to tell you earlier. Yes. And if that clip wasn't creepy enough, the meme maker Silent Meme Jordy on Twitter did this modification. I'm sorry. Have a seat. 
Others heckled him, told him to go home, and called him a loser. And I don't know who made this. There's no watermark on it, but Donald Trump posted it on his Truth Social account. White House Senior Living. Our residents feel right at home. Our vibrant facility offers delightful activities and outings, round-the-clock professional care, and exquisite house-made meals. Well, I've been eating them. everything that's put in front of me. But I've been eating all, all Italian foods, basically. And ice cream. And ice cream. Chocolate chip ice cream. White House Senior Living, where residents feel like presents. And C-3P meme did it again with his deepfake face swapping memes, switching out Jill Biden's face for her doppelganger, rocker Alice Cooper. <laughs> and I think what people don't see is how hard Joe works every single day, that he gets up thinking what he can do for the American people. So I see that strength and that resilience and that steadiness every <laughs> single day day. Wow. You know, his integrity, his character has not changed and he's unwavering. He's unflappable. And over on CNN, which is unironically a joke, they made the mistake of interviewing Kevin O'Leary, who is one of the members on the popular show Shark Tank, where entrepreneurs come and pitch their ideas and hope to get some investments from people like Mark Cuban and others. And CNN had him on to talk about Donald Trump's real estate case, where in New York, the prosecutor is trying to claim that he falsely inflated his assets and they're trying to fine him for over a quarter billion dollars and take away all of his business licenses. And, and by the way, oh, and by the way, this guy is a big time liberal, so definitely not a Trump fan. Forget about Trump. Every single real estate developer everywhere on earth does this. They always talk about their asset being worth a lot, and the bank says no. And that's just the way it is. So in this case, when I'm trying to figure out, and I'm not pro or con, or I don't care about the politics, who lost money? Nobody. The bank got paid back the construction finance loan, and a new building was built, and if, if you're going to sue this case and win, you got to sue every real estate developer everywhere. This is all they do. This is what they do all day long, every day. So I don't think this thing will ever survive appeal, regardless of what the fine is. This doesn't even make sense. Now, look, I know Trump's got a lot of problems in other indictments and everything else. But but this if you're a real estate developer, you're watching this, you're saying, what is this? This is ridiculous. And to be clear, this is about the civil case in New York, not to be confused with the kangaroo court criminal cases, where the judge just unilaterally declared that Trump had inflated his assets fraudulently and prevented him from actually having a jury trial decide that, even though the Seventh Amendment is supposed to guarantee that Americans have the right to a trial by a jury of their peers regarding civil matters worth more than $20, but the George Soros prosecutors always know about certain loopholes. This is the same thing that a judge did to Alex Jones, by the way. It's called a summary judgment, where a judge could just declare that a party is not cooperating properly, not providing supposed documents that, in Alex Jones' case, didn't even exist, and the judge just claimed that they did. And so they said that he wasn't cooperating with discovery and just unilaterally declared him guilty. Because, of course, they couldn't allow risking a jury to actually decide the case because then the jury would decide in favor of the defendants. It's called lawfare or legal lawfare, and unfortunately, there's not much that anybody could do about it. And I detail it in my new book, The War on Conservatives, which you should order in paperback from Amazon.com or download the ebook from any of the major ebook stores. If you like watching my videos, like I say, you're going to really enjoy reading the book. So much more in there I can't get into and a lot more in-depth and detailed. So head on over to Amazon.com and order the paperback or click the link in the description below and check it out. <laughs>